Hello everybody, Marty McConnell, the Off Grid Gecko here, and today I'm going to be showing you something kind of cool. Hopefully, I'll get this done by the end of the day. I don't have much daylight, so some of this is going to be done in darkness. And I'm trying to talk loud enough where the camera can pick me up, but we'll see. So, this axe handle is great. I love it. It's absolutely wonderful. I can't feel hardly anything when I stick this in a piece of wood, and I really love that. And that's due to this low shock design. The only problem is... This guy's coming loose because this plank wasn't completely dried out when I made this handle and actually just sticking that into that piece of wood is almost enough to drop that uh, the axe head off the haft. So we got to fix this problem. Um, so what I'm going to be using is one of these boards, one of these billets that I split out of a board. And looking at this, we're going to be splitting hairs on how close this is to um actually working but as you can see the board is a little longer than the axe so i've got a little wiggle room to deal with and it picks up a little girth right about here so i may actually end up making this a bit shorter and making it more of a camp axe style um i don't know yet but what i'm going to do is basically split this board down and then we're going to get started with the um shaping and profiling and i'm doing six other things over here so if I keep looking over there, it's because I'm trying to keep an eye on things. Anyways, this guy's out. He has uh, been of tremendous service. And that's not working because I'm trying to go across the grain. But um, it's time to do this. So some tools you're going to need. I like using a hatchet, but any axe will work. You're going to need a mallet. You're going to need a blank of wood. And you're going to need a little bit of ingenuity and imagination. Okay? Um, so what I'm going to start by doing is measuring this out and I'm just going to kind of eyeball it as to how much space I need to get this guy hafted and I'm going to put this back towards the thickest part of this. So I think I'm going to split it right here. Now in case you're wondering, this is going to run out and I'm kind of counting on it running out to give the, um, the axe handle a little bit of a profile shape. But at the same time, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to intentionally do anything super damaging. So I'm just going to drive this straight down. If the sucker ends up being totally straight, I'm good with it. I don't, I don't need to have curvy axe handles for no reason. Um, and that is not going to do. But you can see it's running out. Um, so it's already getting thinner. So that's kind of profiling the shape that I want for the handle. And part of that has to do with the grain direction. Of the board because this grain's a little bit twisted so it like it naturally curves into kind of an axe handle shape which is kind of cool um but oh, either way so that'll give it a little bit of a belly and then we can cut back and make the handle um, either way what we want to do is basically split this off so the way that i'm doing that is just basically using my hatchet for a fro and running it down and we'll just split off the side the same way as when we were making these billets. Now, if you're interested in how to make billets, I did a little series on that. You can check it out. But that'll cut the front face. And as you can see, it's very skinny up here at the top, which is what I want. And very fat down here at the bottom. So I'll have room to make like a, a little stop grip for the handle. So that worked out tremendously well. Now let's see how close we are. Um, this board has been carrying in my house for a couple months after sitting out for about six months in the shed out there So I'm fairly certain that this guy is pretty uh, Pretty dried out and I'm not gonna have to worry too much about this Cracking on me or having other problems. I will continue to dry it as this process goes on But just give you an idea for the basic rough out here And you want to make sure not to cut this too small is the biggest thing too small is bad so i'm gonna go to about right here so i'm using the the big end of the axe head to kind of figure out what my lengths are even though it's going to be trimmed down from there and then i'll just split out the back and this is going to run out too but we'll, we'll work with it it'll at least be closer than what we started with so right there, we've got our little shape that we're going to use for the top. Okay, and in case you're wondering, the reason this is green is because I painted it as part of the curing process to let it dry out a little more properly. 
All right, so that's looking good so far. Um, so the next step is going to be basically grinding out our shape. Now there's a couple different ways to do this, um, but they all basically with an axe involve going down and just cutting chunks out of your board. And all these little chips are going to be flying everywhere. Cat, stay away from the camera, please. Um, and then we'll do some fine tuning and refining later on. Like this is going to have to be squared up a little bit. But I don't know exactly how the board's going to tune out yet. So I'm just basically going to rough this out. Now what you can do is take a pencil or something and kind of draw the profile of the axe that you want on here. But basically I'm going for something like this. I want a straight edge coming out of the bottom of the axe because I believe that's helpful. And I'll get into that maybe in a different video. And then I want this guy to be kind of a nice gentle curb on the front. You know what I mean? And I actually may be looking at this backwards. Just have to take that into account. Um, kind of a nice gentle curve. So I want it to basically come down. And then if I can, I want to get a little kick out of this bottom part down here where it comes out like this. So I can make use of run out again on the bottom. And hopefully this doesn't split all the way down because if it does, then I'll ruin this piece of wood really, really quickly. But I would like to have like a little, a little flare out here, but I do want to remove a lot of wood at once. And I don't want to spend all day with this thing. So I'm basically going to line up the bottom with the top and see if I can cut another little chunk out from down here. Yep, that worked perfectly. And you see if you're cutting close to one edge, then the wood's going to tend to run out like that. And it just makes your job so much easier if you can count on that. So that's basically my front. This is my back. Now on the back, it's going to have a little more character to it. So, but either way, this bottom part is going to be the part that runs out. So this wood right now is cut kind of at a trapezoid shape. And what I'm going to do is kind of square it up. Now this is not the best hatchet in the world for this. Uh, a carpentry hatchet would probably be a hell of a lot better. But what you want to do first is kind of score the wood and just cut deep enough that that's the material that you want to remove is at the depth of cut. Okay, and you can do this a dozen different ways. I'm kind of starting off at an angle and then I'll, I'll square it. But when you do your, your longer cuts, you just run down that line and knock those little chips out. And it's going to give you a pretty straight... Am I on? I'm on the fat side too. And all of this wood at the bottom, I'm I really don't care about, so I just want to remove that as fast as possible. So, so now I'm running down the middle. So it was curved like this. I cut it like this, and now I'm running down the middle to kind of straighten everything out a little bit more. And then we've got all this excess wood right in here. That is just, that's just excess wood, okay? Um, the reason that my axe handles are so thin like this is because of flexibility. Like, if I'm swinging a fiberglass axe or a big thick-handled wooden axe, when I plop the axe in a piece of wood, it transfers shock to my hands, and I don't like that. So, when this hits, the handle actually gives just enough where I don't feel anything. I can bury this thing in a piece of wood and it's just super comfortable to use and if you're only chopping wood for like five seconds you probably don't care but if you're going to be out all day splitting logs like that makes a huge difference so what we want to do is kind of mimic that so um i want to get this skinny as fast as possible so i want to go to this section right here and just remove a big old chunk of meat. I think this part's pretty much how I want it. And then I want to remove a chunk of meat down the belly here as well. So let me get started on some of that. I think I'm going to start on the belly and then I'll work on the back. One of the keys here is don't try to be a super perfectionist with this. Um, don't remove too much material starting off and just kind of keep everything to a nice even groove. You'll do a lot better than if you try to remove too much material once then you're worried about keeping to a fine line and this is a rough tool 
So just keep that in mind. You're just kind of roughing out a general shape. You don't want it to necessarily be like Nat's ass, and you definitely don't want to ride that line too close. I'm going to start working on the handle angle down here. And actually, I'm going to score myself a little line there so I can see what I'm doing. And we're starting to get into the shape that's kind of making sense. Okay, Let's see how we're doing. Oh yeah, that'll work out nice. May end up being a twit shorter than what I want, so I'm gonna go ahead and extend this curve all the way down to here. You see how when you when you cut those little spikes in there and when you chip it off, like you're using the run out of the wood there too, because it's gonna tend to flake off instead of just tearing out and gouging into the wood, which we definitely don't want that. So this is kind of a steep angle going in, so I'm just taking my time, doing it slow. Um, even though it's a steep angle, I don't really want to do too much on it. I'd rather remove the material down here first and then bring my angle down to meet it, then go the other way around and end up tearing out too much and catching this somewhere down here and ripping the bottom of the handle in half. That wouldn't be any good, so. That's almost starting to look like an axe handle a little bit. Almost spent way too much time in town today and it is going to be a busy evening for me but try and get as much of this done as I can before the sundown and then I'll pick up the video probably in the morning and it's morning magical morning I think I've covered all the basics of this so I'm just gonna get to chopping um, straightening this thing out a little bit and um, shaping the bottom grip of the handle a little bit and just kind of keep at it. I'm not going to talk too much, so maybe if you're lucky, I'll put this in fast forward so you don't have to sit there and do every little piece of this in detail.
Hello again, everybody. So, we've got the basic shape carved out here. Hi, kitty. And, um, so I basically got the haft. This is not the same shape as the, the axe head, which is over there. Um, the handle, like everything's out, the little grip stop down here. And now we get on to the next phase of this. Now there's a couple different tools that I use for this. Um, one would be a knife, which works fairly effectively. You'd be surprised what you can actually do with it and how much you can take off at a time, um, even before you get it smoothed out. And then after you get it smoothed out, you can actually run the, the knife down at an angle like this and continue to, to smooth everything out. And that's how I like taking pieces off once this guy is to kind of the shape that I want. Um, I've also got a little bit of splitting and cracking going on here from the wood because it wasn't cured properly. So hopefully that doesn't cause me problems when I'm swinging the axe after I put this much time into it. But I've already kind of written this off as a loss and I know I'm going to be carving another handle sooner or later anyway. So just do the best I can to get rid of these cracks and keep them from spreading. Um, one thing you want to be careful of no matter how you do it is this end. You don't want to take off too much material because then you're going to end up with this being too small and it's not going to haft properly and that can be a big pain in the butt. So when you're working up here near the top just get your thumb in behind the knife and work at it really slowly. Try and get, I mean you want a slight taper to the top and both this way and width wise but you generally want this to be pretty straight believe it or not um, and that's so when the axe is hafted on there you drive in your wedge this top part will swell out and then you're pretty much good to go at that point um, for the rest of the body uh, doesn't matter so much just do whatever you can to get the shape down as fast as possible another tool that I like to use is this now this is a rasp and a rasp surprisingly on dry wood with very little pressure will take off a lot of material quickly okay so and it leaves you with a pretty smooth finish so I've rasped this side already and it's just kind of rounded off to a curve um, I took my knife to this part of the, the head and kind of evened it out so both of these tools will give you a fairly smooth finish um, and at this point if you're seeing cracks you might start wondering something about oak um, this blank is actually carved with the grain like you would expect a normal hickory handle um, there is one downside to this with oak and that is that with oak from what I've seen tends to split along medullary rays with a dried piece probably worse than it actually splits along the grain so it might actually serve you better to get a dimensionally stable piece of oak if you're going to use oak with the grains running this way i haven't tried it yet so i don't know but i do know that oak does tend to split along the medullary rays and i haven't had it split along the grain at all yet so i don't know we'll just i'll keep playing that by ear as we go the best tool for doing this is one that I don't have available at the moment and that is a belt sander because with a belt sander you can basically get this guy on there and just and run him down there and get him smooth and shaped really really fast um, I do have a belt sander and once I get it out here I will probably be using that a lot more just because it's so much easier I mean you could use a piece of sandstone rock and just sit here and whittle away on it forever too but um, if you have the tools available there's nothing wrong with using a tool that's a little better for the job so anyways I'm gonna get to working on this guy a little bit and I don't know how much video I'm gonna shoot of this because I don't really like doing this part in the Sun this is more of a sit on the porch at the end of the night kind of activity but I'm gonna start kind of working this guy down and seeing where we get him I'm just going to go find me a shady spot, you know, to sit with it 
and then when I'm ready, I'll come back and we'll finish the top and get ready to cut our kerf and mount the axe head. Should be fun, so stay tuned.